iterators are one of the best features of Rust. In this video, we'll explore them and implement a custom iterator in order to make our code much cleaner. The iterator trait requires you to define the type of the elements being iterated over, as well as the next method. It returns an option of the next value. The method starts returning none once you've reached the end. There are three basic methods to turn a collection into an iterator. Into iter, iter, and iter mute. Into iter creates an iterator with self-owned elements. Because it takes ownership of the collection, you cannot use the collection again. If you iterate over a collection without borrowing it and then try to access it again, you'll get an error stating that it's been moved into into iter. But how if there is no into iter here? Well, it's automatically added. So these two loops are equivalent. Iter creates an iterator with references to elements from the original collection. And iter mute is analogous to iter, but gives you mutable references instead. There are two main traits for working with iterators into iterator and iterator. What is the difference between them? Into iter defines how to create an iterator for a type, and iterator defines how to iterate over that. As you can guess, the into iterator trait is implemented for most built in collections. One of the best aspects of iterators in Rust is that they're lazy. Here's what I mean if we call filter on an iterator, it does not actually filter anything. All it does is it returns an instance of another struct called filter. It simply takes into account that instead of every element, we need every element that satisfies a certain predicate or condition. Now let's implement a custom iterator that allows us to go over a tree step by step. As a side bonus, I'll show you the safest way to implement trees in Rust. First, we create a hash map that stores the ID of each node and the node itself. The ID can be anything that's different for each entry, but I personally use timestamps. Then we add the root node into it and extend the root node until reaching the maximum tree height. As you may have guessed, the idea is to store IDs to nodes and then retrieve them from some sort of collection instead of storing them directly. Anyway, that's not the main focus of the video. To make everything easier, let's create a struct to contain all the information about a tree needed to iterate over it. That includes the current element, basically what we got after the last call of next, a collection to imitate the stack, I'll show you later why we need this, and a reference to all nodes. The last one is a little bit of a workaround because we can't pass any additional arguments to next, so we'll need to store it in self. And we have a function that creates an instance of node iter from the root. Obviously, we can only go over a tree starting from its root. The only ID initially in the stack is the one that belongs to the root. This is an iterative implementation of the tree traversal. Then this method yields the pop top element of the stack. If the stack is empty, none is returned. And as I've already mentioned, once the first non that implies the end of the iterator is returned, none will always be returned from that point on. And now we can use a regular for loop to do a tree traversal. 